from the three. Cornet. Left side through. That's a five yard line. He doesn't cross the 30 yard line. First attack with Eric Good is the 45. Into weather territory to 40. Welcome to the Ram Report with Steve Fairchild. And pass over the middle. Tights wide open. Touchdown, Colorado State. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Ram Report with head coach Steve Fairchild. I'm your host, Brian Roth. The Rams go to 3-1 and one with a thrilling win over Utah State here this past weekend. Steve, congratulations on the win, and boy, what a resilient effort out of your bunch on Saturday. Yeah, it really was. I'm just very happy for our players and coaches. Uh, a little bit like the New Mexico game, you know, we had to fight through some adversity, particularly there in the, in the first half, but they just kept playing hard and kind of believing in each other and uh, found a way to pull it out late. Yeah, a lot of highlights in that one as the Rams pull off the 35-34 double overtime victory. Eaton from the shotgun, he lost the football, it's loose on the field, and Colorado State says they have it, and they do. They'll go first and 10 from their own 32. Here's Turbin, tries the middle, ran into Shaquille Barrett. And a spiraling kick and a fair catch called by Eric Boats. He lost the football, and CSU has their second turnover at the game. Thomas from the shotgun. Thomas looking, fires over the middle to Greenwood. He makes the catch at the 23-yard line. Changing the play, now takes the snap, looking to pass. Now under pressure, and down he goes! Back at the 19-yard line. Third and one from the 13-yard line. Again, the no huddle. Left side, they give it to Smith, trying to get to the outside. He doesn't do it, but he fumbles ahead, and he fumbled the football. Colorado State has recovered, and into the end zone goes Shaquille Barrett. And touchdown, Colorado State. They're going to say it was a fumble. Snap is good, and Kondodiakis will kick it away. High kick, Moats calls for the fair catch, and now he fumbles the football. CSU has fallen on the ball at the 15-yard line. Colorado State has it first and 10 at the 15-yard line of Utah State. Are you kidding me? Rams down by eight. At the one-yard line, Wolke okay the deep back. Thomas, toss sweep, Wolke okay. will dive into the end zone. Yes, he got in. Touchdown, Colorado State. Thomas, seven-step drop. He's looking over the middle, has all day, going to fire corner of the end zone. Caught for the two-point conversion. We're tied at 21. Crockett Gilmore on the reception. Under center is Thomas. Play fake. Wants to pass into the end zone. Gilmore caught for a touchdown. Crockett Gilmore. High formation. Okay, the deep back gets the call. Left side. He's in for a CSU touchdown. Final play of the game. Keaton will turn, hand off. Turbin trying to get to the corner. Not going to be able to do it. The Ram defense gets the stop. And CSU wins it in Logan. 35-34 as the Ram players charge the field. Well, it was just the third overtime game in the history at Colorado State. And Steve, the first time you win an overtime game, uh, your thoughts on that one? It's uh, kind of a different mentality once you get into that extra frame. It really is. You know, I'd been involved in a few overtime games in the NFL where, uh, you know, it's a possession type of thing. But this one, uh, it's, it's fast-paced football. And uh, teams score quick and you're right back out there. And uh, it was it's challenging to say the least. But our kids responded good. We made some plays there in the red zone. and. Uh, found a way to get the ball in the end zone. Yeah, a win like this, uh, can it serve as a springboard both emotionally and in other areas going through the rest of the season? Well, I think it's a good positive thing for our football team and, again, kind of an affirmation that if you just keep playing hard that uh, we've got some good players and somebody's going to make a play. Uh, but, you know, we're, we're still at a stage where we need to get better every week, and, and we've got a quality opponent coming in this, this Saturday, so we've got to have a good week of practice. Yeah, I mean, one of the things I think I take out of it now is you look back to the first four games, you have two road wins, and you have two road wins in which you needed fourth quarter scores to, mm -hmm. to either force overtime or win the game. I and mean, you guys are winning close games on the road. Yeah, and those are ones I, I don't know if we had the confidence or the belief last year to pull that off, but, uh, you know, they're sure playing hard, and I think they trust each other. and. So forth. I also like the the way we're we're traveling. I think we've got a nice uh, kind of mindset on the road, and our kids are really responding to going into kind of a hostile environment and, and keeping their focus. 
comment on the defense because they played outstanding. They gave up a couple big plays, but when they needed stops, they always seemed to get stops for you. There's no question. And, and you know, teams are going to make yards on you, but it's when you can make plays uh, that it really that's really good. And, and obviously, we turned the ball over. Uh, you know, we had some three and outs. Those things are, are light turnovers. Uh, you know, we tackled better, you know, than we had in the CU game. So. Uh, there's just a lot of good stuff going on defensively, and, th and then you look at the special teams. We had a couple turnovers in, the, in that go, uh, in that area that go for us. So uh, there are some good things that happen. Yeah, Shaquille Barrett, linebacker for CSU, Mountain West Conference Defensive Player of the Week. He seems to get better and better. The more playing time he gets, uh, he was fantastic. Yeah, I had a, had a really a, a big game, and, and we kind of knew that when we got him. He was kind of an edge player, an edge pass rush type of guy, and we're using him that. Uh, scenario as well, but uh, the more snaps he gets at middle linebacker, the more comfortable he gets, and, and he's he's really playing well for us. Yeah, in fact, the Rams dominated the Player of the Week category in the Mountain West as Chris Woke, co-offensive Player of the Week, and then Tanner Hedstrom, a long snapper for the Rams, a couple of fumble recoveries. Chris Woke, big part of getting that run game going that struggled early in the game, but I thought you guys were wearing them down as, at the end. Yeah, you know, I like the way we're running the football. You know, sometimes the numbers aren't great, but uh, we're playing physical, and the backs are running hard and you know Chris is kind of an inspiration to everybody when he gets the ball because he just he just hammers it in there he's so physical and uh, you know when we get down close he's a real asset because he can find a way to get it in the end zone. Well it was a fun fun night for Ram fans in Logan Utah when we come back here on the Ram Report we'll take you inside the victorious locker room stay with us. Colorado State season tickets are on sale now. Make your plans to be at Hughes Stadium for every exciting Rams home football game. This year's home schedule includes National Power, Boise State, and Front Range Rivals, Air Force, and Wyoming. Purchase a sideline season ticket and get the Cinch Team Rocky Mountain Showdown game versus CU for no additional charge. Call 1-800-491-RAMS or visit CSURAMS.com. Check out visitftcollins.com for lodging packages and make plans for a Fort Collins weekend. 43,000 CSU Ram alums call Denver home. Now it's easier for Denver Ram fans to stay connected with CSU. CSU is proud to announce the new Colorado State University Denver Center, where Ram alums will feel at home. It's a place to make professional connections, enjoy events with other alumni, and even show your Ram pride with a wide selection of CSU fan gear. Stay connected with CSU, the CSU Denver Center at 17th and Glenarm. Learn more at rams5280.colostate.edu. Welcome back here to the Ram Report with head coach Steve Fairchild. Again, a 35-34 double overtime victory for the Rams. And, of course, that always leads to a festive locker room. Colorado State and Utah State. Rams need to create a few breaks for themselves. You need to generate a few turnovers here this season. What time is it? Now he fumbles the football. CSU is falling on the ball. We just got to look back and say, hey, never give up. When we're down, I mean, we'll just look back at this game and just know, just believe in it and never give up and you can win it. Oh, and it was Mike Caracbo spins him to the turf. We should go into the next game knowing that we're capable of pretty much beating anybody, you know. You know, that's a good football team. You know, Utah State is a great football team. And uh, to come out here and beat them on the road, that's a big win. Play fake. Thomas looking to pass downfield, going to fire into the flat. That's Gilmore. It's caught for a first down as he spun down. We got the win, that's all that mattered. We just got to keep working and uh, we can be a pretty good team. Uh, I think the sign of a, of a good football team is winning when you're not at your best, and that's what we did tonight. And down he goes, back at the 39-yard line, Zach Tejit. Our guys lined up, they played, they, they did what we had to do um, throughout the game. Um, you know, and, and again, they, I mean, that's a tough, good football team, and they run the ball as good as anybody we played. Oh, Shaq, man, he played an awesome game. He played complete from first to fourth quarter all the way through. Overtime, he played a great game. You know, um, just being on the toe, we had been preaching turnover at practice all the time. And I was telling everybody, we're going we gonna to get one in the end zone, you know, to this, this game. And Shaquille Barrett will take it in 
for the touchdown. We just prepare for adversity at all costs. Like in practice, we just always say overcome adversity, overcome adversity. And that game was a lot of adversity. But uh, we just stayed together as a team and believed through the whole game, man. I guess that's what got us through, just believing and standing together as a team. They'll run the toss to Woke again. Woke inside the five. Woke dives to the goal line. He'll be just short. The opportunity is in our hands, and our whole team believed in what we could do. And it was just about believing in each other, going so hard that leaving everything on the field, and that's what we did. That was the opportunity we took. I don't think they wanted to see our offense again, and they probably figured, hey, we got these guys on their heels a little bit. Let's go score on them. So, we changed up our call for one time the whole game, and it worked. Well, what a sight there in the locker room, a victorious locker room there in Logan. And Steve Kevin McGlue, my color analyst who does the post game down the locker room, he said he's been doing the game CSU games for 10 years now. He's never seen a locker room like that. Yeah, it was... It was crazy to say the least, but uh, you know, there's nothing like going into a locker room and seeing the players uh, so happy and celebrating like they were. But did uh, you know we were in kind of a confined quarters, and I thought it was almost a riot at one point. But uh, <laughs> they they had some fun, and you know we we say our prayers and, and you know we talk. Uh, talk about the game and what we're doing the next week, but the kids sure enjoyed themselves. And of course, the rendition of the fight song as well. And, you know, we talked about that defense, and it has played so well. And you guys did a great job against the pass on Saturday. And uh, of course, one of the big keys in pass defense is Momo Thomas. It seems like Momo has been around for about 10 years now, although he's only a junior. You know, he started as a redshirt freshman for us my first year, and a very talented kid. And uh, you know, our entire secondary, Momo particularly, but our entire secondary is playing well, and that, that kind of helps in some of those uh, pass rush situations because it allows guys, uh, you know, they got to hold the ball a little bit longer and allows guys to get to the quarterback. So we're playing well in the secondary. One thing you always recognize with Momo Thomas is his confidence. He has that swagger about him, doesn't he? Yeah, he really does, and, and he shows it on punt returns. You know, yeah. you got you got to be a cool customer to stand back there and return punts in college football. and. And, and really play corner. You know, you're out there on an island sometimes all by yourself, and uh, he certainly has confidence in himself. No, no question about that. And, well, Momo Thomas, one of the keys to the Rams' success. Keaton trying to set up the wide receiver screen. Pass to the far side, cut at the 38. Momo Thomas is there, and he drags down the receiver. When it comes game time, you got to get focused. You got to go. You got to play, you know, 100 miles per hour when you don't got the size. You know, going up against 6'4", 6'3", guys. I'm just a competitor. I like to compete. Hate to lose. Here's Momo Thomas on the run at the 30. Has it out to the 40 to midfield. Thomas has it to the 47. And just keep driving. That's all I'm trying to do is just keep going and keep driving. You know, I'm out here playing this game for my parents. I know people back in Florida is watching, so, you know, that just drives me. He'll throw it again. Plenty of time for Orms. Fires far side. And Paul nearly intercepted, and indeed it is. Think about it, you know, we've all been here the same amount of years. Um, since I've been here, Blue, Ivory, all that's been here, so us playing back there is, you know, fun. You know, we've, we've been here together, so, I mean, just getting young cats in, just helping them out, them helping us out. You know, it's, it's, it's fun back there in the secondary because we basically know each other so much. You know, Coach Duffy harp on communication so much, so we just we just communicate. You know, I know nine times out of ten, I already know what I'm gonna play. I'm gonna know what Ivory plays. We know we all know each other's strength and weaknesses. Off the field, we're all close. We all know each other's strength and weaknesses off the field, also. <laughs> I like to like to smile. Just like to have fun, man. That's that's part of the game. I've always been the cat. You know, to like to win and just have fun. I try to keep a smile on my face because you never know who's watching. So. That, that's just a big deal for me. Final play of the game. I come from a rough area. I mean, my dad always harped on me about leaving and going to school. So, you know, I just, I owe it to them because they've, they've done so much for me. The Ram defense gets the stop and CSU wins it in Logan. 35-34 as the Ram players charge the field. Well, what a stop there to preserve the win. It, there's number five pushing Turbin out of bounds, Coach. Yeah, what a play. You know, it's, it all comes down to that play, and Momo makes the 
tackle on the outside. There were some other guys that were involved, and you know, you got uh, Blue diving in there, and I know C.J. James got off a block. And usually, when you're doing things like that defensively, it's good team defense, and, and that's what it was on that play. Yep, another great win for Colorado State. We'll have more here on the Ram Report with head coach Steve Fairchild coming up after this.